far, far away from the birthplace of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, on the westernmost tip of Europe, lies one of the oldest and most iconic cities in the world. A city known for cinematic hillsides, breathtaking architecture, and of course, the Pastage de Nata. Every year since 2004, in mid-January, the Jiu-Jitsu world has descended upon the picturesque town of Lisbon, Portugal for a week-long competition that has global implications. The IBJJF European Championships is hosted here, and it has quickly become not only the largest Jiu-Jitsu tournament in the world, but also one of the toughest. A lucky few will taste glory, but most will leave with their dreams in pieces. This is my jiu-jitsu journey through Lisbon. You know, every single time I come back to this city, I cannot wait. No. It's such a great city. I can rest... Okay, so it turns out it's a little harder than it looks to be Anthony Bourdain. Now sure, the uh... <clears throat> okay, let's try this again. Every single time I leave Lisbon, I cannot wait to come back here. It's such an amazing city. The cafes, cobblestone streets, atmosphere, sitting in a cafe, having a pastéis ginata and a coffee. I don't think I've ever felt more European than I do in this moment right here. But truthfully, the reason why I love to come back to Lisbon, Portugal, year after year after year, is because the IBJJF European Championships is hands down the most exciting tournament of the year. Every year, it officially kicks off the Gi season. I've seen some jiu-jitsu matches while I've been here that I will remember for the rest of my life. Yes, the, uh, the wine and the food and the people and the coffee and the pastries, that, that, that's all great, for sure. But the jiu-jitsu, the jiu-jitsu is even better, I swear. Here it is, the IBJJF European Championship. Six days, over 4,000 competitors from 70 different countries. It does not get any bigger than this. After the explosion of jiu-jitsu in America, Europe has followed close behind. Countries like Norway, France, Germany, Poland, and Portugal are all turning into powerhouses as academies pop up all over the continent. One country that has been making some serious strides as of late is Ireland. Now, it's no secret that the country has recently seen a combat sports boom. The Irish are flooding to jiu-jitsu gyms all over the place. Nice, Jonathan, good job, good job, good job! And the top black belt carrying the torch is Dara O'Connell. I look like Kid Dale. You know who Kid Dale is? Well, yeah. People always think that I'm him. Dara is the head coach of East Coast Jiu-Jitsu Academy and the premier black belt coming out of Ireland. This week, however, he'll be standing on the other side of the barricade and coaching the over 100 students that he's brought with him. Yeah, he's gonna do at least, at least well, hopefully a lot more. And 1 p.m., we got two more guys. Good job, man, you fought till the end. It's okay, don't be sorry. You fought right till the end, you were so close, man. You just need to be more accurate when you get that chance, yeah? And you should have shot instead of dragged the first time. When we reset, I said, shoot. And then the second time when you did it, it actually it worked, yeah? So the drag was a bit sloppy. But you fought right till the end. You just have to be more composed when you get that chance and make sure you put it away. Because you had his collar, but eventually it just came too high. But you fought till the end, man. That's all you can do. Good job, man.
Stop it. Perfect. Next one. The main thing, man, is obviously getting used to the highest pressure environment. Yeah, it's so loud in here, so noisy. It feels like it's such a big deal. Yeah, like it feels like it's really important, but it's just a jiu-jitsu match. Yeah? It's literally just what, you, what they do every day and that they love to do. Put him flat, big rig, put him flat! Attack the choke! Rushing too much to try to do too much. Your base is good, man. Especially when you get to the half guard. No one gets you at the half guard. You understand? Yeah. Just calm down. I know it's fucking. The first one is the hardest one. Now. Nice, big yeah. yeah. oh. Everyone's doing great, man. A lot of really, a lot of very good performances. We have a lot of people that lost in the quarterfinals. So no, no medals just yet. We still have a lot of people to fight on Sunday. So hopefully we'll pick up some medals on Sunday. Man, how, how are you going to make it there with the boys? You got to have some, some tea and some honey. And exactly. Some... Somebody, somebody said that to me. Yeah, yeah, honey, yeah. honey. That should so be good. I'll get a giant jar and just, just swallow it all. Five seconds. Five seconds. Hey. Ah. The main thing that I want them to see is that they're capable of more. A lot of the time, if you don't come to the big tournament, you have no idea what the level is like. Yeah, so for the newer guys, it's just about seeing the tournament, seeing the size, seeing the way that people fight, experience everything about it, yeah? and see that they're capable, because it's just jiu-jitsu. You know? The Europeans is a meeting point. It's a place where people really engage. Uh, we don't see, we tend to see it once a year here. So it's a moment for celebration as well. I think, I think every professor that's been around Jiu-Jitsu and the competitors that come in very often, they feel like Europeans is like a, a nice place to come over and, and, and you know, celebrate the, you know, the, the, the party of Jiu-Jitsu. See old friends. See old friends, you know, talk about what's going on in the academies, exchange knowledge, maybe arranging training sessions around. Yeah, how have you seen the tournament change? It's growing, it's you know, growing massively. I think uh, the Europeans, last year was the biggest competition ever hold. In Jiu Jitsu, I think this year maybe the second biggest. But you know, you see how popular Jiu Jitsu is, you know, not, not just in America and Brazil, like in Europe. That's, uh, when people look at Jiu Jitsu, they first look at Brazil, now they look at America in terms of numbers. You know, but in Europe, it's like really popular. So he's showing the power of the Jiu Jitsu in our continent over here. He's showing that we are no different from where Jiu Jitsu really had the biggest focus, like United States and Brazil. Yeah. We are right there to the top, you know? In Europe, we're not as used to having all these high level guys here, you know? So I think everybody gets very excited. So I think the atmosphere is better here. I really appreciate you uh, let, letting us follow you along a little bit. No problem, man. Thank you guys for covering everything. And I'm sorry that my voice sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you can hear me. And thank you guys for doing such a good job. Awesome, man. Thank you. Cheers. I appreciate it. Always, guys. And today, I've traveled to Sintra with my colleague Howl Teague and two of the very best black belts in Europe. Welcome to Café Paris. We are in Paris right now, but no Portugal. <laughs> Although Europeans are building their own jiu-jitsu traditions, a number of Brazil's top black belts have moved to the old continent and are helping to expedite the process. One such ambassador is Team Checkmat's Jackson Souza. Now I'm gonna put the pressure here. Jackson grew up in one of Rio de Janeiro's most infamous favelas, Cantagallo, Pavillao, Pavolzinho. It's a pleasure for, for me to bring some of my friends here to see where I am growing up, you know, that's, that's making me happy. 
and after earning his black belt from the Cardo Vieira, he relocated to London. He's already won Europeans twice and has a very bright future. When I came to Europe in 2012, I didn't see the, the, the European like uh, so big like, like now. So I'm glad to be part of this because now even, even, even though I'm Brazilian, I've been living in the UK. For sure, uh, I think uh, I have a, some impact also in the, in the development of Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Which European country do you think is maybe not the strongest now, but will be the biggest? Poland. <laughs> Believe it or not, Jiu Jitsu is extremely popular in Poland. The country boasts more homegrown black belts than any other European country. And emerging as the country's top prospect on the world stage is Adam Mordzinski. Poland is a nice place. It's, it's like a lot of history, a lot of, uh, a lot of nice old buildings. I think Poland has a lot of potential to, to be the, the next country who's gonna build like a more like a fighter to fight for Poland. Both Adam and Jack will look to keep heavyweight gold in Europe tomorrow, but today are being distracted by a much needed adventure. Let's see, she said she was like a very, very good trial. Let's see. <laughs> yeah? Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't worry, it's only 10, 10 people dead per year in a tuk tuk accident here. <laughs> stuff, you've got a little bit of uh, things taken from the nature, it's really nice, mixture of the styles. Can you tell me kind of like what, what just happened <laughs> and where we're going now? Uh, so, we're going back uh, to the Sintra Center because suddenly the clouds came like in a in one second it got all foggy and dark so you know it's a it's a signal for us to end our trip good timing things are just about to get exciting back in lisbon norway's tommy longacker was scoring the submission of the tournament over super heavyweight herbert santos challenge myself. They say he's the baddest motherfucker in the Jiu Jitsu community but until he met me. You know, I'm Norwegian, I'm a Viking, that's what we do. We like to upset people, you know. <laughs> Brazilian Rolando Montero also picked up the biggest win of his young black belt career with gold in the middle heavyweight division. But it was Keenan Cornelius who stole the show, ultimately winning every fight he had by submission and closing out the absolute division with teammate Lucas Barbosa. Everyone shares a little bit. We both walk up with gold medals. And I don't want to know who would actually win the final, so <laughs> I'll leave it like this. Every time I come to the Europeans, it's like a whole new world of jiu-jitsu has been opened to me. The list of prospects keeps getting deeper and deeper, and it's only a matter of time before we start seeing world champions from Sweden or Belgium or even Norway. It means everything to me. It means uh, I get to represent my family, I get to represent my heritage, I get to represent my friends, my family, everything. Jiu-jitsu is a truly global sport now. And the proof is right here in Lisbon. It's true the World Championships represents the legacy of this sport, but Europeans is the future. <laughs>